Hey, Globy, what's the matter? You look sad today. Oh, you're sad because your buddy Pluto is no longer called a planet. Well, that's partially true, but that's no reason to be sad. Pluto is still a planet. Just now, scientists classify it as a dwarf planet. Scientists classify objects based on their traits or characteristics, like size and color. In the case of planets, scientists look at size and the orbit or path of the object in space. In 1930, an American named Clyde Tombaugh discovered Pluto. At that time, it was classified as the ninth planet in our solar system. Today, though, many astronomers say that Pluto is too small to be accurately called a planet. A lot of people still consider Pluto a planet, as they've just grown up knowing it's a planet and hearing that it's a planet. What's happened is we've started to discover other bodies in our solar system that are similar to Pluto, and they're not considered planets yet. So the question was, well, what defines a planet and what doesn't? We've never had a really scientific definition. We've only had a list. So in trying to come up with a scientific definition that encompasses everything we might observe, Pluto didn't quite make the cut. So we decided on three little stages. The body has to orbit a star and not another planet. If it orbits another planet, it's the moon. The body has to be big enough, basically, to be spherical. There are a lot of oddly shaped asteroids. They're not big enough to make themselves into a sphere. And then the third criteria is the orbit of the planet has to have been such that it's cleared its neighborhood of other things that are potentially planets. Otherwise, you just kind of have a belt of things. And so Pluto didn't quite meet that criteria because we've learned that beyond Pluto, there's a whole belt called the Kuiper Belt of small icy objects like that, that some are bigger, some are smaller. And since they're there, we consider Pluto to be a member of the Kuiper Belt rather than a planet on its own. So we call it a dwarf planet. And beyond the Kuiper Belt is the Oort Cloud. There's whole bunch of other bodies out there. And around other stars, we're starting to discover planets, although nothing so small as Pluto or even Earth. So what happened? How did Pluto lose its status as a planet? Well, in 1930, astronomers thought Pluto was much larger than it actually is. In fact, they thought it was the same size as Earth. They looked at how much light was reflecting from the sun and used that to help calculate the size of Pluto. But they were way off in their estimates. One of their mistakes is they thought Pluto's surface was much darker than it actually is. Therefore, they thought it was much bigger. Let's see how that could happen. If you have two objects of equal size, the object that is lighter in color is going to reflect more of the sun's light. For example, a dark object, say a hill covered with grass, doesn't reflect as much sunlight as another hill the same size covered in snow. Therefore, a darker object would have to be larger than the lighter object to reflect the same amount of light. Today, astronomers have much more powerful telescopes than they did in 1930. They discovered that Pluto was much lighter in color than originally thought. Astronomers thought Pluto was dark gray, when in fact, it's a lighter gray. Therefore, it didn't need to be the size they originally thought in order to reflect the amount of light they observed. In fact, Pluto is considerably smaller than they thought. It's about one-fifth the size of Earth. With powerful new telescopes, scientists are discovering smaller and smaller objects in our solar system. Many of these dwarf planets are made of rock and ice, but they also have very unusual orbits, much like the orbit of Pluto. Their orbits cross the orbits of other objects. Pluto's orbit is so big that it takes 249 years to go around the Sun. In that time, Pluto spends 20 years inside the orbit of Neptune, since Pluto does not share the same properties as other planets, astronomers decided they could no longer classify Pluto as a planet like Earth or Mars. Now they call Pluto a dwarf planet. Another reason for changing the status of Pluto as a planet was the discovery of other objects in our solar system beyond Pluto. It forced the question, if Pluto is a planet, then shouldn't these other objects also be called planets? Because Pluto is so small and so far away, it's difficult for scientists to learn a lot about it. Pluto is about 35 times farther from the sun than the Earth is. On January 19, 2006, NASA launched New Horizons, which is a robotic spacecraft that will fly past Pluto and gather important information that it will then send back to our scientists. New Horizons is the fastest spacecraft to ever leave Earth. 
After New Horizons was launched, it flew past our moon in just half a day. But Pluto is so far away that even at this very fast speed, it will take nine years for the spacecraft to reach Pluto. As New Horizons made its journey towards Pluto, it actually began to slow down due to the sun's gravitational pull. But here's something really cool. It flew by Jupiter in February of 2007 and used the planet's gravitational field to increase its speed towards Pluto. New Horizons is part of NASA's New Frontiers mission, which is a series of scientific space missions that will increase our understanding of our solar system. So, Globy, even though Pluto is no longer classified as a major planet, it's still a major source of interest for our scientists. And NASA's New Horizons spacecraft will one day be sending us incredible information on the dwarf planet we call Pluto.